Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Welcome back to the Anxiety Project channel. Today, we're diving into chaos. Chaos, that is health anxiety. Because when someone is battling, well, the unknown, because an illness is what represents uncertainty, right? It's this little ball of chaos that is now taking over your what you thought to be the the world and your perceptions of the world. So Carl Jung, he says that there is this round chaos and the round chaos is like the golden snitch. And he doesn't say that specifically. Obviously, you know, Harry Potter came later, but to easily understand what Carl Jung was talking about is to look at the golden snitch. The golden snitch is something that glimmers and captures your attention, just like a symptom, just like the unknown, just like the snake slithering into your walled known space of comfort. And it's like what I said in the last video, the ocean of the infinite, the ocean of the unknown, that, that, in, that unknown will always come into your reality and your current perceptions. And so how do we deal with the unknown? First, it draws our attention. So that's the snitch. It draws our attention. Like, it, it, what is that? And the, the hero myth is the one who pays attention to what draws our attention, just like Moses in the burning bush. Moses is drawn to this, the, the bush that's on fire. And in, in that, he, he finds God. And in potential, you find God. In what you seek out, that is beyond what's familiar to you, you find God. And so when you look towards the snitch and you start to, well, you first acknowledge it and then you move towards, step by step towards the thing that glimmers. Then what happens is once you catch it, what's inside of that unknown is what makes well first of all it kills off a part of much of who you are because even the steps towards obtaining the snitch requires many many deaths and rebirths of your psyche and your identity right that's the hero's journey the hero's journey is the one who goes and finds the gold in the mountain the hobbit story or it's the story of um, Indiana Jones and the the Ark of the Covenant like inside the Ark of the Covenant is well be careful when when look if, if you're if you're not properly oriented in the world and if you haven't got your wisdom and and well yourself in check what happens is you stare into the abyss the abyss stares back I think that's the quote from Nietzsche right? you got to be careful and it kills the Nazis right because they stare into it Right? And, and, so, and when you stare into God, what happens is the ultimate judgmental figure shines a light on all of your inadequacies. And you sure as hell feel that way when you meet someone successful and someone who's put their life together. You know, much of your inadequacies bubble up to the surface because like when you meet the rock, right, for example, you're going to be like, you're going to feel like, man, this guy's so disciplined. He works out almost all day long. He's working on movies. He has a tight schedule. And, and like part of you is like, wow, I can do so much more. I can do so much more. So that's what God is that representation of the spirit of who you could be potential and potential lingers in what we don't understand. But we to get to where we don't understand, you have to first move out of your known space that you inhabit of comfort. So to a health anxiety sufferer, that's like reassurance seeking, Dr. Google lying in bed all day, um, eating junk foods or taking medications or even taking drugs, alcohol, things that help numb the temporary the the snakes around you but only produce even more snakes on top of that but that's the comfort and then to move into well a self-actualized person who is free from health anxiety what you have to do is start to move towards what you don't understand you have to look into the ark of the covenant of what you don't understand but maybe before you even look into the abyss you have to maybe take small enough steps you know, you have to tackle 
snakes that are manageable, manageable before you're able to handle the Ark of the Covenant. Because what's so interesting about that symbol is that Indiana Jones is properly oriented. He's wise enough and he's humble enough to know that maybe you shouldn't stare into that. You're not ready for that. And the Nazis were certainly not ready. The reason why they were killed off is because, well, they weren't properly oriented in the world. They stared into the abyss. That judgmental figure was too much for them to bear. And so much of them had to burn away. And literally in the movie, and it's symbolically true that they actually, you know, melted in Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, their face melted. And it's so true because be careful what you, be careful. You know, you get too close, close to God, you might not survive because that ultimate judgmental figure will judge you, man. And you better be ready because, and so, so much of the health anxiety suffer has to burn away. So much of their identity of, you know, my identity is around, well, I'm, I'm cool because I'm smoking or I, I'm social when I smoke. So if I don't smoke, then who am I? I'm not going to be that social person. Well, you have to replace that bad habit with something else. So if you're struggling with health anxiety, how can you build on the healthy identity? Well, you can start to regulate a, a wake and sleep routine to help regulate your circadian rhythm. You can meditate begin meditation even even five to ten minutes even if you do it badly establish some structure because when the health anxiety sufferer establishes structure they start to add more order into the disorder Carl Jung he can't emphasize this enough he says that what you need most in your life is found where you least want to look and you know, maybe you should pay, pay attention to the thing glimmering in the distance. Maybe there's someone on YouTube that speaks out to you, but you're like, no, nah, I don't want to listen to them because, you know, what, what do they know? What does Brad know? What does this person know, right? And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, th that's the part of you that's not willing to change or step outside. You just want to stay in your confined bubble. But maybe if you pay attention enough and you step into a new area that you don't understand, then maybe some change can actually occur. And another sign, well, you're in familiar territory is when you're engaging in a bad habit and you start to notice that the one bad habit is producing many snakes. So a bad habit like sleeping around, it it satisfies your internal tyrant, right? You're, you're just motivated by a certain desire, but that desire and, you know, obtaining that, you'll notice if you're awake enough that when you sleep with somebody, there's many snakes associated with that. The first one is emotional attachment. Uh, what if she gets too emotionally attached? What if I get too emotionally attached? I don't really know what I want from this relationship. Do I have to fake it? Do I have to lie? Do I have to make up excuses? And the, so you might ghost them and then feel a little bit of shame and guilt associated with that. So, And then there's also the possibility of obtaining a STD, sexually transmitted disease or something. Or there's a possibility that um, she might get pregnant. There's so many things associated with the the thing, well, you know, I'm just trying to fill a desire. And once I get it, I'll be happy. It's like, yeah, when you get it, depending on what the habit is, pay attention because it could be producing many negative outcomes that are way, way worse than you, that you originally think the outcome will be. You would think the outcome will be great and will satisfy you, but quite the contrary. There's, that's what round chaos is. The chaos is like innumerable, innumerable amounts of outcomes. And that's what, so the, the round chaos is the act of sleeping around, or it's the fight that you have with your partner. Embedded within that fight is maybe five things that are, uh, that are not even associated with the topic that you're dealing with, but they all come together and it's all encapsulated within this fight. And you got to solve each one of these different snakes. Maybe it's something, in regards to your partner and her being abused when she was like 10 years old or like the negative relationship he had with his father, you know, or it could be 
her struggles at work that are slithering into the pro other problem that you're contending or maybe it's embedded within you know how you you how who's responsible for the duties around the house is embedded within the overarching uh narrative in culture of which gender should do which sort of chores or you know everything's embedded within that your beliefs are all embedded with that values the the higher order morality of society is embedded with that so that's what i mean in round chaos prepare to encounter many snakes all at one time so to unpack chaos like I said, form a routine. It adds predictability to the unknown. It adds stability. Follow a structure, follow a program. A lot of people struggling with anxiety need step-by-step -step instructions on how to establish more of this order and to understand anxiety. Because like I keep saying, to unpack health anxiety is you have to look into it, into that health anxiety and understand what health anxiety is, what's it about, understanding yourself and how the brain operates, how the body responds to anxiety, what's the best possible solution to handle panic episodes, and then unpacking past traumas is another part of that too. So it's it's like when I first you know learned that I had to take on the cross of my anxiety, I I, all of this came at me at once. I was like, oh my God, I got to reconstitute my perceptions and my routines and how I look at myself, my identity as a whole. And so unpacking your past is part of that and also unraveling the future and establishing goals so that you can watch yourself progress towards a goal because you can't feel any positive emotion unless you're watching yourself move towards some aim in your life. So, I mean, you have to kill off so much of you doing all of this, your past identity, to establish a new identity. But like Tony Robbins says, you can't just erase smoking from your life. You have to add something else. And I've heard, you know, him say people would add running or exercise or gym or something that's more beneficial because a lot of people don't find the value in smoking. Like I said, there's many s negatives to smoking. I mean, people feel unhealthy when they smoke. They feel like they're dependent. They feel like, oh, it's a waste of money. And so once you start to establish the pains of the thing that you're trying to break, the part of your identity that you're trying to break, you're more, it's going to motivate you to move towards something positive where there's not so many snakes embedded in meditation. Quite the contrary, it's going to produce a whole host of positive outcomes. But you first have to wander in the desert of breaking a habit and introducing a new one, and that's a de mini death and rebirth. But maybe you have to take on the small enough snakes in order to contend with the Ark of the Covenant later on in your life, when maybe you'll never be ready to take on the Ark of the Covenant, you know, the ultimate dragon in your life. But you actually can get there. You know, you get closer to God the more you sh shift and orient yourself towards a higher good. And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's video. Thank you everyone for being a part of this community. Thank you, thank you for your comments. Remember, leave them because everyone's watching, everyone's part of this community, everyone wants to grow. What are you struggling with in terms of anxiety? And rise above anxiety. I'll see you next time. Thank you everybody for being a part of this community. Please comment below. Also, give this a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because then you'll be the first to know whenever I release a new video.